Hello everyone, my name is Atratsu, and happy Lunar New Year. Bet you can't, bet you can't guess which lunar symbol it is this time. Yeah, the rooster. I'm not gonna say the other way that it says on Chinese, li Chinese placemats. Anyway, hope you're having a good Lunar New Year. Hope that, you know, the twin moons of Tatooine are treating you well, and, you know, you're getting your fill of moons, and however that goes. So I covered Winter's Day. I wanted to cover the Lunar Holiday as well. So there's some new stuff in Guild Wars 2, yet again. They're pretty good about celebrating their holidays around here. They have a new activity, they've got some achievements. All in all, this holiday is very lackluster compared to Halloween and Christmas, which is a little bit disappointing, but I mean, what else are they really going to do? So the big thing to talk about with this is kind of the dailies, the achievements, and then the one activity. There are a lot of people that really like it because there's going to be a lot of themes like this. So in the mini mini store, there's a rooster that you can get. There are gathering things that you can get. So that's what Guild Wars 2 kind of does with their lunar holidays. And so you wait until lunar holidays, a particular creature that you like. Like the dragon was a few years back. So I'm not going to get any dragon stuff for who knows how long. What you're going to get out of your dailies, so each daily is going to give you one of these homemade lucky envelopes. One of the dailies is actually to open a bunch of these envelopes up. So you're also going to get lucky red envelopes. So I've already highlighted the daily quests that I have not yet gotten for the lunar holiday. You got Finding Fortune, so open six lucky envelopes. You got a Sparkling Demonstration, which is to find five firecrackers in... Divinity's Reach, Dragon Ball Participant, play two rounds of Dragon Ball, and then Dragon Ball Boss. We're not going to do this because that's a whole bunch of nonsense, but one thing at a time, we will talk about the activity here in just a little bit. Really quickly, let's talk over where you got to go for this stuff. Once again, we find ourselves in Divinity's Reach. If you don't know how to get here, don't worry. I'm actually going to be having a sequence of videos on Guild Wars 2 coming out. These don't count, but I mean, it's in the works. It's going to be coming out gonna be a big project it's gonna be great it's gonna be so busy all right so it's in divinity's reach here are some of the lucky envelope things we're gonna open up enough of these to get the daily so there we go finding fortune daily is unlocked you get three little lucky envelopes and then you get a homemade lucky envelope I would prefer to open little lucky envelopes because they count for this and they're also a bound on acquire whereas you can sell the homemade envelopes so if you get yourself a large amount of them you can just ditch a bunch of the little lucky envelopes open them up and then you can sell the homemade ones because they sell pretty decently I think they have a fair drop rate generally the items that you're gonna get out of these are like said food which will give you advantages during the lunar holiday you will also get experience scrolls which will also boost your leveling so it's a bunch of good stuff for leveling alts or just leveling up in general if you're trying to get yourself some spirit shards. I haven't used spirit shards yet in this game. This is the vendor that you can talk to. So see what that person has. You can buy divine lucky envelopes. You can buy other envelopes around here for being a Dragon Ball champion. You can have memory of the Zodiac if you're going to get into the crafting. I'm not going to talk about any of that. This is the person that you go to to talk to whatever you want to do. So a couple more dailies to talk about. You have the firecracker here, so that's what you got to do. You can hold down control and you can see the firecracker. So there's one there, there's one there, there are a few over here. There's an achievement for getting all of the firecrackers in Divinity's Reach. As you can see how far I've gotten into these achievements so far, I'm really not trying. I've got a bunch of other projects that I want to work on and I'm just not feeling it anymore. You can do firecrack firecracker finder which you need a total of 10 looks like 10 no there are 10 tiers okay there are more than just 10 Will this tell me yeah there's there's a fair amount and i'm sure dolphy has a guide up if you if you really need to find them got dragon's heart a lot of these this is really going to be cut up into two main areas the main area will be like Divinity's Reach or PvE, and then the rest of the content and achievements are related to Dragon Brawl. Dragon Ball. Yeah. Dragon, Dragon, come on the Dragon, Dragon Ball Z. You can see I can get these from up here. It's a really easy sequence. I'm sure 
everybody and their goldfish knows how to get all of these. You can jump in, and these count for your overall dailies, so you actually can drop in, grab all the dailies that you need, and then go log out, and your dailies can be done in no time flat. If you missed one of them, there is another one under the bridge over here, so you can hit those. Those are the ones that I've found. I have not gone particularly looking for stuff, but there you go. So, two dailies down. The final daily is for... Well, the final two dailies are for Dragon Ball. So this is the Dragon Ball Arena. You click on here, say I'm ready to play. Then it loads you right into the Dragon Ball Arena. So a couple things to talk about this arena. I'm actually going to teach you the Atratsu secrets for how to play this game. So, just like in the other one. Oh boy, that's a great start. You have different abilities. This is, yeah, great. Kill me, guys. That's going to... Great start. Great start. Yep. No, no problem. I, you know, great. I'm going to listen to my advice, guys. Listen to my advice, and you too can be killed right out the gate. So the way that this game works is it doesn't matter what your class is. Yet again, like like the snowball one that we talked about over Christmas time, you use your one key to get him, get him. Yeah. Then you run around to collect these different orbs. That first orb that's down there, that orb is always... Dang it, dang it. That first orb is always going to be an AoE toss that just explodes on impact. I'm on a, I've, I've got a sneaking suspicion I'm on a bad team. So that means that that's pretty much set. A lot of times what'll happen in this, in this, um, really? Already. A lot of times what's gonna happen in this game is one team is going to, really, really? Okay, that's fine. That is A-OK. -okay. That is just super sauce awesomeness. I am perfectly fine with this. This is by far the worst, the worst activity in Guild Wars 2 ever. It is the worst. There is there is just almost nothing redeeming about this activity. So as you can see, there are different skills. The skill we just picked up, this is an interrupt. So your four is an interrupt. Your five is a reflect. So if you reflect at the right time around a bunch of people, your reflect can actually kill people. He's good. He's good. Oh, no. There are also spots that you can go to heal. Let's get that guy. Come on. Got him. Crap. And you can dodge. Your dodge is really important in this one. The whole idea is you want to grab the power-ups that are going to help you the most. Now, your standard one attack starts off really weak, and so my strategy is I always try to upgrade it to, I think it's called the Phoenix. So there we go, we got this one, and then we want to run down in this hole, in this corner, or the other corner. Remember that the map is pretty symmetrical. Come on, let's get this guy. Sit, there you go. Everyone has pretty much the same set amount of health. Those little blue orbs that we're running over, those are small healing packs. Oh no, this is bad. So, we're going to be chased by somebody, I'm certain. Alright, this three skill is a slowdown. Ah, The worst! Like I said, this whole game is pretty much stacked. Look at that. I am talking and I'm already second on this leaderboard. Pretty much all the good players have already stacked up on one side of the game. So there's really little chance of winning on this one. It's always very lopsided. Sometimes there is the rare occasion that that the teams are pretty close to being equal. But as soon as one team starts to win, the other team pretty much gives up and stops trying. Because, I mean, I can't really blame them. It kind of feels like there's not much point to trying anymore. Kind of like that person. Get him, get him. That person's gunning for me. The strategy is you normally look to whoever has the least amount of health and then you go for them. It's all right, come on. 
Let's get it. Got the health. A lot of times, especially with, like, this is a keyboard keyboard turner, you can just do that to get around the keyboard turner. God, it's totally, totally out of control under here. Even when you are... Even when you are outnumbered, if you can get yourself all of the upgrades and you know when to use them, you use them at the right times, that can a lot of times help you. Something to keep in mind is the spring areas. As you saw earlier, when people are jumping up and down on the springs, a lot of times, depending on computer and latency connections, it sometimes gets a little bit tricky to get out of there. So as you can see, I am first on my team. That is in part that the rest of my team quit. The other part is that I've been probably just with bad people who are going to end up quitting, leaving immediately. So if you really want to get some wins, all right, you look at whoever was, whoever was on the remaining team and you hope that you're paired up with them. All right. It looks like it was balanced. So this game, there might be a better chance. Uh-oh. Can we switch? Can we switch? You can hit the swap team button up here if they're uneven. But this is probably going to be equal. See, that guy couldn't get out of the spring, right? Because he didn't time it correctly. All right, we don't want to meet them. We want to grab this upgrade. And let's try to get to the center. Center is a norm normally a good spot. There are two power-ups that show up on this map. There's a power-up right up here at this spot that I'm standing. And there is also a power-up that shows up underneath us. The power up up here is stealth. When you're stealth, nobody can see you. You can just run around. No one's going to get you. The other power up under here is rage. I believe you take more damage when you are under the rage power up or buff. However, you also deal double damage. So you kill people in like two or three hits. It's really good. So now you can kind of get an idea as why I like the phoenix one so dang much because the phoenix upgrade let's get that I uh, don't know if this is going to work out for me ah it was close you got a few extra hits on me I thought maybe I could do that with getting that the phoenix upgrade if everyone on your team has been playing really smart then the phoenix upgrade and being in the middle of the area can do a lot of damage because the phoenix acts more as a homing beacon it'll home on home on to your target rather than the standard attack which is just basically one direction it will attack it also does more damage when it's upgraded too there we go now we have that upgrade All right. If you can ever get in a situation where you're where you are the one chasing, that is generally uh, the best situation to be in. All right. See, he thinks that he's doing well because he's doing the chasing thing. There we go. If you can double team with somebody like we just did here, that is also ideal. So you can kind of keep an eye at the top right or top left of your mini map. So I want to reject other people from getting upgrades and so I should run around on their side and getting this upgrade so that's gonna reset the cooldown period for that so you don't want them to get that upgrade grab this one as well okay this guy's almost dead so we should finish him off before he gets health there we go this is the kind of nonsense that everyone else was doing against me reflect he reflected his two attack right into himself that is why his health evaporated. That and two other people jumped on it. Let's hit that. There's actually an achievement for getting enough interrupts. So this game is closer, but as you can clearly see, our team is ahead by about 100 points. Each kill that you get is going to render you about 10 points, I believe. I think you get about 10 points each kill. And then you, obviously, yourself, only get one point for each kill. But once the, the victor has clearly been displayed, it's like the, the other team, they're not, they're not trying as heavily as possible anymore. 
At this point, a lot of things you can try to do on the losing side that might make a difference, might not make a difference. One of the things that you can do, you can try to get yourself all the power-ups, but that's not going to help too much. What you really need to do is you need to aim for the people that have, at this point, all of the power-ups. And you can see that when you target somebody. So this guy, he's got no power-ups. He's pretty much dead. Like, he's got nowhere to go. This guy has one power-up, the interrupt, as you can see by the buffs on them. So she's now just going to eat up all of those. Get that guy. Okay. This point, it would be really smart for me to get up to where all those buffs are so that the enemy team cannot get them. So there's the stealth buff. Excellent. So I can demonstrate that. You go stealth. Now none of these people can see what's happening. They're just, their health is evaporating and they have no idea why their health is going. If they're new, anyway. Then the rage buff will appear right down here in this spot. So I wanted to reject that guy from getting any health packs. That guy's dead, that guy's dead, and there we go, we win! That's all the nonsense we're going to do about this one. As you can see, 17-15. That's a pretty good score on my part. And then you'd have to do this... Oh, this guy's, this guy's still trying. Let's just reflect. Keep trying. Ah, almost had him. Means we need to watch another loading screen. Let's get out of here. You would need to play this game. All right, so for wins, it's not even games. The one, achieve, the one, the one daily is to get 10 contributions so you play the game no 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 no. what am i even talking about the one achievement that we have gotten is to play dragon brawl dragon ball rather play dragon ball twice oh look at that we got the champion one so there you go I've, I've played enough and i've won enough we'll be able to show what to go through that but let's go back to that daily that i was talking about so participant you only need to play two rounds, win or lose. So that's why I only play two rounds if you're going to go for this daily. This other one, on the other hand, this one's like, oh, what? You think you're good? You got to win five times. We've won only once. So depending on the team that you're on and the RNG of it, you might not get this daily for hours. Something also to keep in mind, it's probably a little bit too late to start looking towards the achievements, but... When you're going for these achievements, they're significantly easier the earlier the holiday happens. Because more people are playing, a lot of people are just sitting Dragon Ball just to get through it. So again, to recap, the, the best thing to do while you're playing that activity is to try to finish off people that their health is already low. If you find a keyboard turner, get up close to them, circle them, grab the Phoenix power up as soon as possible. Pretty much all the other power-ups are, are just arbitrary. There's there are very little differences. The only one that I would say are is equally as important, almost equally as important as the Phoenix. The Phoenix is the most important power-up. You're five skilled. The Reflect is the second most. Because if you're just falling into the middle of your entire enemy team, hit that. you got a couple seconds to run and try to get yourself healed up. But, as you can see, the Dragon Ball Champion, that one is, that one is infinite. So it'll just continue to reset. This is a healing one, so you let your health get low and you heal up, and it's a whole bunch of nonsense, and I'm not going to work on that one. Dragon's Gaze, this is the one that you get for interrupting. So that was your three skill, I believe? It was your three or four. Yeah. And so you need to just time it just right when someone is either throwing something or throwing a power up. And then that's to uh, get all that. So those are all the achievements. And that's really about all there is to say about this whole event. Okay, so getting all those wins, which took me a bunch of different games to get that. You get a, just a standard yellow rare item. Woohoo. And a token of the Dragon Brawl champion. Alright. Keep calling it Dragon Brawl. I don't even know what's going on. I just don't... I feel like Dragon Ball is just too blatant... Too blatantly copying something else. Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball Champion Chest of Ten Divine Envelopes. Wait, how much is the Divine Envelope normally? It's just one. You know what? Let's just spend some, some on this. Alright, so. 
Oh, you only get one. Well then, good thing I got that one. So no matter how many other times you get, you have a limited amount. I think this might reset daily. I'm not going to worry about it too much. Let's see what we got, unless we can sell them. Can we sell them? We cannot sell them. So let's open it up. What do we get? We got 10 divine lucky envelopes. So that is the same price. Might need to look up online what the difference is between, because this is divine lucky envelope. Divine lucky envelope. I don't know what the difference is and why Thank it's you. a difference. I think this probably has better drop rates. Okay. So I'm getting golden rooster figurines. As you can see, it's a nice little cool sparkly effect. All right. So you got ourselves a bunch of essence of luck. If you don't know what the essences of luck are for, you normally get these from salvaging gear. And they give you luck. Luck supposedly increases your chance at getting rarer items I believe is a placebo I do not care one way or another and then with these golden rooster figurines that almost covers the purchase itself so that's pretty decent let's see if I can sell any of these nonsense things okay so that firework is trash you could just pretty much buy that this is trash that is really the only justification. So I probably lost about three gold in getting that. The only reason why you probably... Oh, look at that. Ornette. Ornamental gold trophy. So just from that one alone, that, that did justify it. So I actually made gold by doing that decision. Yay! Oh, I can't sell you. Why am I running up to you? May Let's sell to gold. this person. Ta-da. Now those junk items, Before I got a little bit of gold. So, you know, be it what it may... That's really all there is to say about the event. If you found this interesting, hopefully there was some educational value of it. Just felt like making another video about Guild Wars 2. I'll be trying to cover each one of the Guild Wars 2 holidays and events that comes up this year. So, if you liked it, leave a comment. Leave a like. Likes are about as arbitrary as the loot itself was. Let me know what you thought. Thank you for watching. My name's Atratsu, and this wasn't a review. Thank you.